trying to get the truth. They're trying to understand this because the thing, you know, was traumatizing to have gone through it and, and not really understood why people were doing what they were doing, why they were reacting the way they were reacting, why they couldn't say what was on their minds, you know, why they couldn't just tell you like I can tell you, you know, what's going on, why they couldn't just spill it, you know, why why they all have to wear masks and behave in such an abominable, evil manner in churches. Wherever we went to church, that's what we found. And I just wondered why. I mean, isn't it, I mean, wouldn't I be some kind of derelict if I didn't investigate, didn't try to get to the bottom of the truth of the whole thing? And now that I know the truth, I'm, I'm not mad. And I'm not angry the way I was treated. I mean, what does it matter, you know? People, you know, they, I wondered just why, why uh, Christians would, you know, would be so evil. I, I just, I, I never saw so, so many evil people in my life. And I wondered, you know, people that would just kill you as soon as look at you, you know, they would, they, they would, you know, they'd rape your wife. They would, you know, blackmail you and then put, make you a slave. You know, they would, all these things. And I'm like, what? I thought this was a place of worship, of fellowship. No, that's not what's going on. Not at all. You just don't get it. It's not a place of worship. Okay, so that's the, that's the ugly truth, you know. And and Wayne Kramer in his film, Pawn Shop Chronicles, uh, laid it out I think better, more succinctly than I ever could. Uh, a picture tells a thousand words, and this he was just spot on. He hit it. He hit a grand slam with it, and you'll never get the you know. Whenever you do a movie like that that makes people think, um, it usually loses at the box. I don't know how this is done, but I don't know much about it. I haven't kept up with it. I don't take Variety or Hollywood Reporter, but. You know, I, I, it, it should be viewed by all, especially by Christians who would, oh, it's so violent. I can just imagine Christians cringing and putting it on the, on the no-fly list, you know, that you do not air this in the home. I think they should be forced to watch it, along with some of the other movies I mentioned, because, you know, they need to see themselves. But I, we have to make some stipulations in this courtroom today. Number one. I do not expect humanity to repent ever. Indeed, they won't. I just want to make sure that's an axiomatic statement now from the Zeph report. Humanity will not repent. Individuals who, who say they repented most of the time don't because they don't know what it means. So that's, that's where we are. Um, the church will not repent whether you're talking about the Catholics, the Protestants, the breakaways, the uh, any, uh, the five ones, the state run, you know, whatever. No, they they are they're fine. In other words, they are Rick Warren's son. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. He was kind of like I sort of picture him as the Joker in uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, eyes, uh, not eyes wide shut, but in a uh, uh, Full Metal Jacket. Remember the Joker. Well, that's a great film. You, you watch that again and again. Well, the Joker was this journalist. And on his helmet, he had the peace sign. And then he had kill them all. Kill them all and the peace sign, both on the same helmet. Psh, there it was, Kubrick, genius. There it was, boom, right in your face. The same truth. I've been wondering, we've been looking at this all my life. I kept wondering about it. When I did my first collage, when I was like 16, I did a collage with JFK and Bobby Kennedy and... John F. Kennedy and, and other, you know, uh, things, you know, and then I had surfing pictures and, you know, my whole wall was a collage. And I was wondering why my mother ripped it down, you know. And it was that, it was that, it was that, that, that process that was going since childhood, trying to, you know, I, I, I been trying to figure it out the entire time. And I realized, and it just hit me what it is. I mean, I realized... All the time, I've been looking at a kind of a will or, or, or decision within to be evil is the reason. And it's like, that just didn't make sense. And, you know, I think you could be a much more compassionate person if you realize, yeah, we all have the cancer, you know. When you realize, you know, some people can put up a fight against it, you know, against the evil within themselves. 
but others are not that strong and they can't. And, you know, so you start to be able to then really forgive, don't you? Vendetta, hardly more like forgiveness. But had I not gone on the quest for the inquiry, there's nothing more to me to talk about because this is the answer to all the questions that have ever been. This is the answer to the riddle of the Sphinx. This is the Rosetta Stone of all reality. This is it. It's there's nothing more or less to the whole ball of wax. You might say, well, who and who made it happen, and you know, and why? It, you know, you'd be really angry that you know the thing you believe that the church doctrine or the Christian doctrine was all a lie. It was all based on lies. The whole damn thing is a lie. And it took me a long time to be able to say that. To be honest, to be able to really look at the data and go, you know what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what Wayne Kramer did in two seconds has taken me a lifetime. But maybe because I'm in denial, I, I don't want it to be like that. I'm very childlike, you know, even, you know, my spirit is very, you know, it's just eternally youthful. You know what I mean? I, I, in other words, I don't want to believe anything evil about people. I don't want to believe you got to, you know, sell your soul to have some sort of life on a stupid game show. Well, how stupid is that? I don't want to believe that. People would just go for it. I don't want to believe all the things that are really true. Of course, when you're down on your luck and that's the only deal you got, you're going to take that deal. I mean... Right? Of course, it's understandable why there's an Adolf Hitler killing Jews. But, you know, he was, had a weakness and, you know, and he was made that way. That's part of his genetic makeup and, and uh, his physicality. You know, he couldn't help it. You know, he, or if you like, he didn't put up much of a fight. Uh, now, let's talk about humanity and destiny. Destiny is also written in the DNA. And, you know, the, the Bible kind of comes from, in a sense, it's, a, it's like a holographic DNA document showing us again and again, story after story, the conflict between light and dark, good and evil, punishment and reward. Remember, the whole thing is behaviorist, in a sense. Did you see how the Obama administration, by the way, is, is using now behavioral principles to shape people's behavior in America? They're actually now rolling out the psychiatrists. <laughs> like I predict, just another prediction I made that came due. But I mean, I thought that was hilarious that uh, they're now using the mind control techniques of B.F. Skinner on the American population. It was an article yesterday, I saw it. And uh, I, was, I was just giddy, thrilled. Everything that I, I can predict Obama to a T, everything that I predict he ends up doing. It's almost like I'm writing the script for him. I can tell you what he's going to do next and next and next and next. He's just so predictable, isn't he? I mean, rolling out the B.F. Skinner thing, the behavioral um, um, therapy for America to start shaping it into, you know, to shape this. this we're, we're, we're kind of like in, in a mental hospital. And what's happening is we're we're give, we're being given therapy to make our to make us acceptable global citizens for the future. Oh, he proclaims God. He sings Amazing Grace. No, I mean I'm just wondering if he's a robot at this point. I don't I don't know if there's anyone you know I've I've seen him speak. You know the same speech like over and over, and I'm just wondering if he's just programmed. If he's a cyborg, I'm, I'm actually beginning to wonder that he may that they may have advanced cyborgs that look just like that that don't age. But he, I've seen him age, and he's got like graying hair and stuff. So maybe um, maybe he's not a machine, but certainly he he behaves like a machine when he's on. And uh, but anyway, now I just found it amazing that um, and the people that created Obama, you know, they're the people that run the world, and so you know that's why. All the agencies, FBI, CIA, they're dancing not to Obama's tune. He's dancing to the same tune that the, the social engineers and the, the elite behind the scenes that you don't see. Not, I'm not even talking about Rothschild. I'm talking about people you don't know um, who are really pulling the strings. Uh, they're dancing to that tune. So you have Obama, CIA, FBI, blah, blah, blah. They're not, 
taking the cue from the president. The news media is wrong, incorrect as usual. They're taking their cue from the owners because they understand they're slaves and, they've, and they're programmed and they've, they've already given over to it. They've bowed down to it. They're part of it. So they act as a hive rather than the president and then them following. They all go in unison and the news media as well. They all go in unison versus the um, freedom lovers, you know, I guess, who are trying not to be programmed, not trying not to fall into the trap. So there's this eternal struggle between the two, which has always been the way it's been here. Uh, so selling your soul to the devil would be the equivalent to joining the Obama administration, I mean, at this point, or the, you know, joining the progressives, I guess. And uh, there would be rewards for that versus being a holdout and, you know, um, or you could join the Republicans too and you'd, there'd be a, you know, it's kind of almost like a, like a metaphor for, for the thing that we're looking at. But um, as I look back at my life, I realize, uh, and then there's, you know, the whole bounty hunting thing. Why would somebody who's free in Christ put on a mask, get to know a person like a lamb, you know, somebody that's not really connected with the world or anything, you know, just kind of out there, and gently kind of try to reel them into the, uh, to, to, to cash in one way or the other? Why would a Christian do that? You know, become their friend, mimic them, then start to try to control them, start to handle them, then start to slowly, you know, uh, get them trained like a horse, I guess, like a horse whisperer, and then and deliver them to the to the to the um, slaughter table. Right, because that's what they that's what they went through, and that monkey see monkey do. And because there's great rewards for that person, should they be able to bring that lamb to the slaughter? Am I right? So that would make the the Christian who's doing who's taking that one under their wing exceptionally satanic and exceptionally evil. So, Your Honor, I rest my case. But on the other hand, I, but you know, human, that's what humanity does. I've watched this same thing over and over and over and over and over, people doing this. Over and over and over and over and over again, I've seen it. And I've said to them, don't you understand that by participating in this, you're destroying yourself? No, my incentive is money. If I can deliver this one to the, uh, to the table, I get money. Like I'm a bounty hunter. And if you lose, I, I, get, well, I, get, oh, oh, I might get punished really bad. Yeah. But who's punishing and who's giving the good? Who's gifting and who's punishing? This situation, I predict, will result, I'm talking about, you know, the phony good and all that, will result in the destruction and the ext an extinction level of event of humanity that basically eradicates civilization forever and ever. I do believe that if you want to interpret the word of God as the, the, the hammer of God as being these people that, that plan to release biological weapons and other plagues upon the earth, and the, it says in the Bible, the angels are, are opening these vials. Well, the angels are opening it using these humans who have doctored it up in the lab to release it. That, yes, those plagues, the pale horse, 91% uh, of humans upon the earth eradicated will in fact occur because the Bible, you know, I believe the Bible's holographic and it's indicating, yes, that's the case. So you have, you know, you call these people evil, but they're right in line with scripture, aren't they? And Lord says, that's what he's going to do in the end. The only hope you've got is if Mike Horsey is right and the, 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 the uh, temple has to be built and the sacrifice has to begin and be taken away and the Antichrist has to be reigning from the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem. And if, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, maybe you won't see that sort of, that's kind of like the Left Behind series had a little bit of that in it. 
But that's, that's, you know, from a guy that really studies scripture and Bible prophecy. And, you know, this is, this is a, he would disagree with me totally about the original sin. We would go around and around. I mean, I, I, he's a great guy, you know, and there's a lot of great people in the churches as well. I'm not against you. Okay, let me make this really clear. The Zephyr Report's not against churchgoers. All the dude tried to do was just kind of wake you up to the situation to make you under, at least understand, to, be, to become conscious, just to, to, be, to wake up from your slumber. You know, and, and your reaction to me is to try to accuse me of, of having a vendetta, which I don't have because I wasn't really very hurt in the, my church experience. I, I, I don't feel, you know, I was, whatever the hurties are from the past, I don't feel they're anything, even a hill of beans right now compared to the real problems some people have out there and the slaughter of humanity and genocide and things like that. I've had not, no problems like that. So no, I have no vendetta. A vendetta against the church. But you must be saying these things because you have a vendetta. It's like, no, I'm saying these things so you, bro, will wake up. But now I realize it's also for me so that I don't fall into the trap or for me so I can heal from a trauma, let's say. But in healing, um, I let go anything any actor did, any, anybody who acted evilly toward me. I... You know, I realize, I fully understand why. If I were in their shoes, I would have done the same thing. So, no need to hold on to that. The thing I was trying to do here the last, you know, 30, 40, 50 years was to, to heal from childhood traumas, to heal my, I'm just always the kind of person that wants to know why there's evil in the world, wants to know why things are the way they are, wants to know why, me included, we all act evilly at times, Wants to know, you know, look in the mirror and say, Lord, I've, I've got this sickness in me. What the heck? And so does he, and so does she, and so do they. We all do. So I cut humanity total slack. I get it. But why don't you cut me a little slack for having been on the trail of the truth all this time? I mean, I'm beyond uh, the political patriots, all that. I'm beyond all that. I'm, I want to get to the nub of it. I don't want to join this party or that party or the tea party or this or that. I don't care. I just wanted to get to what the, the, the whole damn thing is about. Don't you understand? I wanted to get to the bottom line beyond everybody's opinion, beyond theologies, philosophies, and all the conjecturing people have done in the name of truth. And, and it's been a bunch of lies, a bunch of hooey. Want to get to the bottom line. What is it, Lord? What is it? What are we saying? What's the Bible about? What are you about? And I have my answer. And I understand the whole thing. There's nothing more for me to learn. That's not an arrogant statement. That's just a, a, a fact. We can look at it a bunch of different ways. We can twist it around. You know, I have not answered why this, and I'm, that's not my inquiry. My inquiry... My inquiry is why, yes, but I mean, why in the first place? Not my inquiry, you know, who would do such a thing? See, because my interpretation of the Adam and Eve story in Genesis, which I, I believe the Bible has truth in it, but it needs to be interpreted, you know, can't be interpreted unless you pursue it. Really kind of puts the blame back on the creator in a way. But here's how he gets out of it. He gets out of it because it's impersonal. He is no respecter of persons. And by that truth, we understand our lives are not as valuable as we think they are. If he wants to have a story like this, good versus evil, and have epic battles between people and he wants to create it, you know, it's, 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 it's an impersonal, it doesn't really matter. It's like if a kid wants to go play in a sandbox. It doesn't really matter. You know, we feel cog consciously offended. I feel at times offended that, you know, I can't seem to do what I want to do or get to where I want to go. And the Lord could fix that easily, but he doesn't. And then the devil shows up and says, I can fix that.
<laughs> Just go kill that guy over there for me, and uh, oh no, no one will find out. And you're a made man, dude. Yes, we understand that you know the the, the gangs and the you know the mafias and all this stuff like that. That's all based on Lucifer. You know, it's all based on that pecking order. You know, armies, everything, everything. The key to understanding the church is understanding the church is Satan. Satan is the church. It's, it's, it's like key. Jesus really is not got anything to do with it. I mean, it's, you know, he's, he's like put up there on the cross and there's a cross up on the altar and there's stained glass with Mary and Jesus and the whole kind of story. But that's got nothing to do with what's going on there. The, the church is Satan. The church isn't Jesus. It's Satan. And when you understand that, you then and you understand the DNA is you hear Satan's voice because you have that DNA in you. It's like you, you, you have that connection. But you also have God DNA. So I, I always marveled at this idea that you would sell your soul to the devil so you can say, like in Wayne Kramer's movie, you sell your soul to the devil... Okay, he's hanging outside the liquor store. He's the evangelist in town, handing out tracts. How perfect is this movie? He said what I'm trying to say in, in, in ye, taking me years. He says it in 90 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's art. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I mean. That's what we artists are supposed to be about. It's about truth. Wherever it leads, and this is where it leads. And uh, so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't feel um, anything toward Christians really one way or the other. I, I don't feel, I, I no longer have the church as my laboratory or my, the thing I'm speaking about. I, you know, from this day forward, I think we can put the church issue to rest now. Nor do I blame them for doing whatever it is they do in their churches. I it's not my concern anymore, and it's got nothing to do with me, and it's none of my business. It was my business because I needed to find out why. Why? Why, why, why? We just couldn't. We looked at it, and we looked at it. We just couldn't. It just took us forever to figure it out. You know? Um, I can shout at the evil in the world in music. And I do. I just kind of like do whatever the next thing is. You know, the music is really the prophecy. You know, my prophetic gift goes into music mainly. You know, if if it's really more than a prophetic gift, it's it's a supernatural. Let's just say my supernatural gifts go into the more into the poetic because it's more immediate and it and it's also into the feeling of the music. It's more the sonic power of it. You know, it's taken together. And it's not always palatable to people. I mean, I don't make tracks for people to like. You know, I, I try to be true to what's going on at that moment and then, and then and let it happen. And then, uh, you know, people will tell me, you know, they, it has a certain meaning beyond... Just like the movie did for me. The movie did the same thing for me. It had a prophetic meaning to me. Did, did, does Wayne know he has these gifts? Uh, he doesn't need to know. Yes, he has these gifts, but I mean... Yeah, and he shared them, and I got it, and I have gifts too, and I share them, and you get it. It's you know that's the way it goes around. Um, we say there are good people and bad people, but really what we mean is humanity has fallen, and there's good and bad in all of us, right? All of us are sinners, fall short of the glory of God. Amen. No, no works we do are anything but filthy rags to God, because all works coming from us would be corrupt fruit from a corrupt tree. So we need a savior to save us from that. But really what we need is like a doctor to come fix the DNA thing. And, and what, if the DNA is fixed, then what happens? We're translated, released back to eternity from whence we came, uh, before the foundation of the world, into the New Jerusalem, which is the new DNA, which is the restoration and the, um, you know, then we find out, wow, oh, I click my shoes together and, I, you know, there's no place like home. We, we wake up to find we never were gone from there. There never was this. That's the other thing I've learned over the time. This doesn't exist. There isn't this. And when we're back to where we were, 
there would not have ever been this in the first place. Hence, God didn't do the, any evil by creating this because this wasn't created. If you get my meaning legally, if you can read me legally, you lawyers out there, do you understand where I'm going with this? That kind of logic. If, if it didn't exist in the first place, there's no blame, yes? Oh, and to you people, yeah, you know what? I've had church people because, I, because they've been my subject, so they've been feeling like I'm the enemy. But I've had them say things like um, really nasty things to me. But this idea of um, accusing me of being evil because I don't condone serving Satan and calling it church. See, to me, that just seems incredible. Now, but not everyone goes to church is down with the devil. I'm just saying that's the system. You know, that's the system. 501c3, that's the system. I know loads of good people that go to church. They get a lot out of it, and they should keep going. But, oh, this movie would be hated by Christians. But I think that, I see, that's not my inquiry. If you, if you go to church, that's not my issue. Go. Go every day of your life. I'm not going to think more or less of you. I'm not going to disrespect you or respect you more or less whether you go to church or whether you pray to God quietly or whether you don't believe at all, I'm going to treat you the same way. You know, if you're cool with me, I'm cool with you. We have a connection, then we're friends. I got your back. You know, that's just the way it is. But please don't try to muzzle me because my, if my words offend you because I'm not even talking about you. I'm not talking about any church goers I'm talking about humanity. I'm talking about you know, church, mosques, whatever. They're all the same to me. Organizations, institutions, they're all the same. We could easily just be talking about a, a corporation right now or an institution. Because there's always this personal view of Satan, right? And then there's the corporate view, the system. And... Uh, I'm talking about more of, of humanity. I'm not talking about you or me or, you know, I'm offended by you, Z, because you put down our church. You put us down. You're blah, 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 blah. I said, no, I don't. I'm not putting you down at all. I respect you. I understand the need for church. I understand the need for mosques. I understand the need for temples and synagogues and places of worship and sacred spaces. I understand the need for all that. That's a human need. I am not putting you down for participating in your religion or your religion of non-religion. I don't care what you participate in. It's all the same to me. It's all the same to me. But oh, how offended we become. Well, it looks like you're just putting down humanity then. No, I'm not putting down humanity. I'm explaining humanity. What we are, which you don't seem to have the courage to face. Who you, because right, you think you're a good guy and everyone else is a bad guy. I mean, you know, that's, you know, there's a lot of evil around, but you're okay. Now, I'm evil, you're evil, we're all evil. I'm good, you're good, we're all good to a certain extent. You know, I understand that, but I want to get to the bottom of it. Because it doesn't seem to be like a free will thing. It seems more to be a physical thing. And it seems more to be that we are more or less the symptoms of our physical makeup. And that's the point that I'm making today. Not a personal one, meaning a virtuous man versus one that's not. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm terrible myself, you know, and I can't stand myself half the time because of that. Because I just don't live up to what I think the ideal should be. In church, I'd be, you know, I'd be kicked out for being a sinner, I'm sure, because I don't put on airs very well. I don't lie too well, and so I would be just grossly out there like, yeah, got drunk last night and told everyone to go to hell. I'm back, ready for communion. <laughs> You're supposed to cover that up. Oh, well, I can't cover it up too well. I'm just a notorious sinner, but thank God he's there. Well, how about you bow your knee to the devil and I'll be forgiven? No, I won't do that. <laughs> then get out of here. Okay. I don't. 
the devil, if you will, is a metaphor in a sense too for the DNA. And so is God. I would expect from being an alien that if I'm reading the DNA in the laboratory, that I would be able to write the entire book of humanity as it is, and I would say that one must bow to the devil and accept the Lord, both, to reflect the DNA perfectly. In other words, the DNA is designed to get you to do just that. Any other exception would be abnormal based on based on whoever engineered it. Let me just put it that way. That the devil has been intertwined as the slaving prison, prison, imprisoning force, meaning you're not, holog- you're not multidimensional anymore. So that intertwining of the DNA, that, that corrupting of it, tethered you to the earth and made it like that. So that you would have to bow to the devil in order to sing Amazing Grace. Friends, I kid you not. Trish, how many nights have we stayed up talking about this? Yeah. Yeah. I think the devil does exist. Yes, I understand. But how many nights have we wondered about why you have to sell your soul in order to sing Amazing Grace? I don't have to sell my soul to sing it. Right, but why have we wondered that that was the system? Why have, how long has it been that we tried to figure that out? Okay, Trish Trish does not agree. I am saying no devil, no amazing grace. No devil, no church. No devil, no civilized society, no degree, no pudding, no country club, no nothing. It's written there. The difference is, God says, and and his word says, don't give place to that even though it's there. Trust me and I'll get you out of this mess. But I won't lead you if you go back. I won't take care of you if you go back. To go with me, you must have faith and trust me. And I will lead you out of there. But if you don't have faith, you'll go back. If you try to go back and then have me as an insurance policy, you won't have me. You will simply have that. You'll have the devil. If I deliver you out of that deal you made, and 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 let me make something very perfectly clear legally. From a legal standpoint, one cannot sell one's soul. Just want to make clear that that uh, when the Bible says trading in souls, it could also say trading in free wills or trading in slaves. Um, you, it, when it says being in possession of your souls, it's it's yes. If you make allegiances with with you know, if it's more like an allegiance, but in terms of selling a soul, you don't really have the legal right to do that. Well, I have free will. I can give my soul. Yeah, the, 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 yes, people believe that. That's the popular belief. But I think, you know, from a very philosophical, legal perspective, um, it, it, it's the equivalent of saying, well, do you own the creation or, or not, you know, or some aspect of it? And the answer would be no. It's the Lord. It goes, it, 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 if you look at Ecclesiastes, you know, um, it goes, from the Lord, you know, the 12th chapter goes from the Lord, right? Dust, you know, from the dust comes the creation, then back to dust. And then it returns to the Lord who gave it the spirit or the animus to to make the creation come to life. So it returns to the Lord who owns it. So do you, can you sell your soul the answer? Technically, technically, no, you cannot. Is there a devil to be made a deal with and all that? Technically, no, there, there, there isn't even this this existence you think you have and I have, there isn't this. Um, can you actually sell your soul to the devil in exchange for a 
yes, in a game show kind of way, and it's temporary. And then you got to, you know, uh, after that, um, you have to uh, serve the devil to keep getting lesser and lesser gifts or perks. And as you get older, the, they dry up. And then usually older people will repent to Jesus because because the, the, the money dried up, you know. And um, it's fine. It's, it's the way it was programmed. I'm just here to give you the, the, the Z gospel that, you know, the good news is humanity blames itself. To, there's too much blame going on. You know, like the song by The Who, you know, the bad man, the sad man behind blue eyes, you know, the famous song, you know, it's basically like a song about a guy that's like, you know, not connected to the world system and he's having a terrible time and he's blaming, you know, he's blaming humanity for his problems and and he's sad and he's he's kind of like, I think what's being described there is just humanity, you know, the human condition. And... um you know, whenever something starts going good, give him something bad. Whenever, whenever he starts laughing, tell him something to make him start crying. Whenever he's, you know, right. Whenever he's kind of up, up doing something good, kick him in the teeth. You know, put him in the, treat him like a dog. Don't, don't talk to him like you talk to each other. Belittle him, humiliate him, and just and as long as humanity is involved in that activity, of you know, subjugating the next class, the next race, the next group over there, you know, or this behind this, this man behind blue eyes who's being mistreated. And, the, you know, people worry, well, gosh, what happens when he wakes up and finds out we all been playing a trick on him? He's going to fight back and kill us all, take vengeance. And that's what they worry about. It's like, well, why do you pick on him in the first place? Well, then to that answer would be that why did you crucify Jesus? Why do you pick on a kid in the playground? Over and over and over, we see the group, the socialized group, picking on the misfit over and over and over, or the one who's not connected, making him the brunt and the blame of all that's wrong with the world, while the group, happily, in denial, thinks they're the bomb and thinks they're great and congratulates each other and, and buys each other's record albums and boosts it up to number one, while these people over here, or this one over here, is... By scapegoating him, the group gets the, goes up the seesaw. This is the exact reflection of the DNA programming. From the DNA, I would, expe I would expect to see that. Yeah, but it's already written what you'll choose. You have free will to choose what you've been programmed to choose. And that's basically... The, 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 we we're in a terrible situation, and I just want you to have some compassion for the people that want to extinct man. They're trying their best to bring peace, and they feel that the best way to do it is to end not just humanity, but all the planets and stars and everything. To use their physics to destroy all that was created, and whatever they thought the Big Bang was. To make it go back to pre-that, you know, to some kind of a, a little piece of matter the size of your uh, thumb because that's less evil. They're doing it because they understand the problem the same way I understand it from a scientific point of view. And it's like they, they inherited it, but they don't like it. They don't want it. So they want to eradicate DNA or modify DNA or somehow escape into a machine or something to get out of this mess. And I don't absolutely fully understand that. And I fully, you know, one can only look at that and go, well, of course. Of course they're trying to get out of this thing. Of course they're trying to end the thing that's been the bane of their lives. Of course they're trying to escape this situation. Of course they think the situation's evil. But if you bounce from one end of the DNA to the other, if you go from like God to the devil, you know, or back, you're out of alignment, you're out of alignment, either, either way, it seems. Hence, I must sell my soul to the devil in order to sing Amazing Grace. Then all is right with the world and everyone's singing with me. 
And it's, it's just it, and what a lovely world this is. Now everyone can fall in love and walk under the street lights and have a romantic time because all is right with the world. Because both ends of the DNA are at in some kind of temporary harmony, right? So therefore, it's the duty of the church. I'm being facetious now, so, so don't think I'm being serious. I'm, I'm, there's a little bit of a joke. It's the duty of the church to represent Satan fully, to make sure that's a prerequisite for all members so that the church really has, in a sense, is the sole gatherer. Someone said bait and switch. Yeah. Okay, but it's also the sole purpose of Islam and Judaism and all of them. It's the same purpose. They're all identical in that way. The savior in Buddhism is Buddha. The savior in Christianity is Jesus. The savior in Islam is the prophet. The savior, right? There's, you know, there's always something. And 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 the and the, you know, Middle Eastern monotheistic religions, we have this idea of the afterlife of heaven. And so I think my inquiry now is, uh, you know, what I've looked at this. I just want you to know, before I leave the topic completely, I've looked at this thing and I've been involved in it for many years as a thinker and as an experiencer. And I, I guess I had to finally just come to the end of this inquiry and answer the question. We were made this way and we, so we would expect to have a world exactly as it is. No mystery there. It is that way uh, because people are inherently evil. They're also good. So it kind of swings both ways. But um, the idea of, I mean, there is a God who's a, a person who is in our lives. And, and it's involved in this whole thing. And, and, but it's not like... Sp- the idea that he really just wants to lead his people home. If he wanted that, then they'd be home. He's God. He wants this. And it exists. Though it really doesn't, at least for our intensive purposes, we're here. We're experiencing it. We don't like it. What don't we like about it? Well, for one thing, uh, old age, dying, seeing other people suffering, uh, suffering of animals, suffering of trees and plants, suffering all around us. Do you like it? I don't like it. I have to sell my soul to the devil who is the evangelist in our church, handing out tracts at the rib place. All the town following around Elvis betting on what he'll do or won't do and getting into a near fighting with each other, uh, trying to prove who's right about what, what Elvis is going to do. Elvis finally takes the devil's deal. Then they all sing Amazing Grace together and no longer is Elvis followed around. They're all one big family now. Everyone's getting along. There is... Nothing else I can say about this. I don't like Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler and Mother Teresa are the same from a distance. They're two sides of the same coin. And so that's the way I'm looking at it at this point. You know, I've solved it, I understand it. You know, it's, it's not like the world's broken, but we need to reach the world for Jesus. Jesus is not going to reach the world anytime soon. And to say you're going to go to hell if you don't embrace Jesus and say, hail Jesus, is absurd. And, um, you know, I suppose I would tell you this, it, trusting Jesus, trusting the Lord, the Lord's there. You know, 
Lord Jesus, I spoke to Jesus today. You know, but I'm talking to Jesus, I'm talking to God, I'm talking to Yahweh, I'm talking to Jesus, I'm talking to Creator, I'm talking to, you know, whatever. Why this? Well, I believe that my ability to reason through it was given to me by the Lord. And um, certainly I have no, you know, now I understand yes, from, the, from the more distant aspect of this whole thing, I understand, you know, that it, it's not really a real thing. It's some kind of thing that there really isn't a purpose to it that we would understand, and we're not going to understand it. It's kind of a mystery, but it's paradoxical, so there's no point. Um, but what I can understand is the, the, the corruption of the, of the flesh. And the corruption of the flesh, meaning things like death and cycles of planets and things like that, that you know, stars or suns are born and die out and different things happen, and all these, the cyclical nature of all of it. And that's also another reason that they're trying to come up with some technology to end all of it. Not just humanity, but the entire thing, the, the, what it is. And they believe they're actually doing God's work or something, or that they're better than God, or I, I don't know. You know, whatever it is, it's understandable that they would think that way. It's understandable that the, 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 the church and the mosques and the, the, would all be at war with each other. Denominations would all be at war with each other. It makes sense that Jesus would be thrown around. We got, no, we got Jesus. No, our Jesus is better than your Jesus. That it would be like some plastic doll thrown around. It makes sense that the whole thing would be what it is, a cover for pornography, a cover for drug dealing, a cover for criminality. It makes sense that we would have criminality and holiness together in the same room as one. It makes sense that, that, that the sun would rise and the sun would set and the moon would rise and the moon would set. It makes sense that it would be dark in the movie theater and then the screen would light up. It makes sense that the, the, there would be warm in some places and cold in others. It makes sense that uh, your animals would live and then they would die. You would live, then you would die. It makes sense that people would go to war and then be friends. Go to war and then be friends. Go to war and then be friends. What doesn't make sense is that people would... Um, oh, oh, and the reason people will serve the devil and act like they're not is because of a money motive. And money, friends power, money, sex, etc. So they will bring in souls, lost souls, to the table to see what they can get for them. You know, and then, and then sell the slave, you know, or the unwitting one, and uh, try to cash in. All of it makes perfect sense. The vengeance of the Lord is also very real, just like the supernatural aspect of Satan is very real. Satan exists a being. The Lord exists also a person, a spirit, but a person. The Lord will deliver anyone out of this satanic mess, out of this corrupt DNA, who trust him. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God who will lead humanity, um, who is there, who is the Savior. Uh, one can make a legal argument that Jesus saved humanity whether they like it or not. Another can say, no, you have to give your free will consent. I can say this, that the contest right now for people is to, whether they will overcome the world or serve the, or, you know, serve the devil. Um, overcome means redemption in Christ is overcome. Not bowing down to the devil is overcoming. Having bowed down to the devil but being redeemed by Christ is overcoming. Um, serving the devil one day ping-ponging back and forth, but believing Jesus is God, believing he's the one to get you out of this mess, your weakness pulling you back in. It's like back and forth and back and forth, but your heart's really with Jesus, you know, you've overcome. Feeling guilty about the whole thing, you know, is a path to overcoming. Feeling just fine with it, and you can't wait to get to the next ritual and butcher some more babies or something. Uh, probably not, but then you would be as if you never were while you're still alive, you're possessed by somebody else. And so you, I don't know, where does that soul go? I don't, I have no idea. I don't care anymore. Because why? Because the point is, is all coming down to the writing of the code. 
and the code is perfectly reflected in this, the world as it is right now. My inner state and the outer state are one. There is no disunity. If I want God, and I do, then that's written in me. That's the, my hear his voice. I don't hear the other voice. That's also decided. There are sheep and goats. There's those made for... This is absolutely true. It's in, the, the Bible is absolutely true. It's just a matter of interpretation. The, the, the whole doctrine of original sin is, is, is up for debate, as many other things are. Like the, the rapture would be completely up for debate. Will we, will we meet with them and, and, and will, will we be uh, together in some kind of a place at some point, some time, we'll be consciously there? Um, yeah. Why not? That's not something I'm going to be thinking about all day long. But I do talk to God all day long, um, which way to go. And, I, and when I talk to God, the, 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 one of the problems that you have, you have got to face is you're not always, not always going to hear what you want to hear. You just, you know what I mean? You fall short here, you fall short that you, 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 it's not like God has to tell you. You feel those things when you try to approach God. You feel that you fall short. And then, then you realize, ah, but that's really normal. So I'm going to keep approaching God. Do I wish it was better? Yes. I wish that we didn't have the corrupt DNA. I wish that we didn't have the, 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 the meddling to make us slaves to a temporary situation. I wish that we, you know, didn't have to go through all this pain and suffering. I wish that we could live eternally in harmony with one another. I wish that we um, could end all the suffering of everything. I wish that we weren't victims of this code you people that feel like victims you know that's logical that you should feel that way absolutely you know that there's nothing you can do to abridge your fate absolutely that's I feel that way half the time myself I feel like I'm thrown here into this world and um, I, I have no idea why I just know that I'm surrounded by suffering and that, that that's what life seems to be about and uh, humanity seems to be punished over and over again for stuff it didn't do, unfairly, by the way. And it's really hard to take. And I wish that wasn't the case. A good case in point would be America being punished by some oligarchy behind the scenes through the political leadership to take everything they have and kill them all. I mean, that's what it looks like to me, just that, that that's, that's the goal anyway. And then the greater goal would be to kill all humanity, and the greater goal would be to kill everything. And, and that's, yeah, that's out there. But what's also out there is love. To love things, you know, makes pain go away, makes suffering go away. So to bring that other part that's written also in. But the two cannot live in harmony, folks. You can't bow down to the, look, we've had the discussion now. Let's get to, to the bottom line. You cannot bow down to the devil and have God, or bow down to God and have the devil. It's a decision, yes, but the battle within will always be there. I mean, until you're out of this situation and out of this DNA thing. Um, the idea that to bow down to the devil, or to sell one's soul to the devil, in order to sing Amazing Grace, makes perfect sense now. I see the two as inextricably linked, twisted as a DNA strand. It's the exception to the rule to not be in that boat. Will God save all those earnest churchgoers who really want the Lord but are still tied to the devil? Uh, gosh, you know, that's a good question. In the wee hours, I mean, before you die and, you know, you make your peace with God, I, I maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't need to speculate on that anymore because, I, well, what do I care? I don't care. I don't care what happens. I mean, you, I don't know you. I, I don't even know that you exist. So what do I know? 
you know? It's like, whether you make your peace with God, whether you don't, where do people go when they don't make their peace with God? Or is there a hell somewhere separate from God? Look, I, all those questions are already answered in my inquiry. You know, my thinking on it wouldn't be able to really, um, these all seem like silly questions to me. The main thing we need to know is this. All life is suffering. Um, we should be agents to put an end to suffering. Those who are conscious should try to work for the good, seek the light, and put an end to suffering of people around us if we can. And, and, and to the world in, in, in general, in a larger view. I, I think the humanitarian aspect of trying to help rather than hurt is good. But, but, but does it help humanity if you sell your soul to the devil? No, because you, you then have to do evil um, to, you have to reinforce the way the world is on the evil side in order to keep getting personal selfish good for yourself. And then you can cover that all up by being charitable, but then you see it's a tortured situation. Like you'll have to have a war in Afghanistan, but you're going to give to the Children's Foundation over here. You're going to have to have it, right? You're going to go attack the kill innocent Syrians, but using al-Qaeda with American tax dollars who presumably flew into the towers, but then you're going to go ahead and help with this charity of, you know, this educational charity of these kids, underprivileged kids over there in the inner city. Um, it just, that, that don't wash, man. You can't, it, right? Then the other guy says, well, wait a sec. You embrace all humanity, the good and the bad and the ugly, and you do the best you can, and uh, we'll call that the middle way. And then and it's like Buddhism tried the middle way. There is no middle way. There's right, there's wrong. There's light, there's dark. You, you make a choice, but the, the pull within us is to do both. But you can't have both. Overcoming means, you know, you made the choice to go to the light, not the dark, and uh, you, 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 you stayed out of the dark. In other words, you, you were separate from, separated from that system. No longer do you bring, you're not a bounty hunter. You don't bring souls into the table to cash them in for money because that's, that's easier than killing people or wh whatever. You know, but all of it is perfectly understandable at this point. What, to, what proves God's existence and his sovereignty over the whole thing and his, his you know, it seems we're here be, to learn to trust God so God can take us home because it says the spirit returns to God from whence it came. So we, we go back to him. You know, it's really hard for me to be uh, excited about anything anymore, you know, like, like, you know, the politicos are, you know, we're going to the gala ball and the so-and-so will be there. I mean, you know, it's great to see people of all walks of life and, you know, we run into people all the time, all kinds of things. But, and that's nice, but I mean, you know, but are they there? Are they, the, the next day, did you really meet with any, you know, there's, there's, there's that, but, um, this idea that there's a gala somewhere or some event here or there. It, it, it's all, um, when you see it from this perspective, it all becomes the same. Nothing is hierarchical anymore. Uh, the news is not interesting because whether it's Obama or this guy or the thing about drones or the or the, 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 the ball that they're all going to, or the premiere of the movie, or the failure of this album, or the this or that, or the who lost the fight, or the, you know, the missiles into Syria, and the, da, 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 and the economy is about to go up. No, it's about to go down. Who's going to win the election? Da, 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 da. It's all just a joke. So let this topic be exhausted. You know, the church people are doing exactly, you know, what's logical. And when I say church, I mean religion, religionistas. They're doing what's logical. They're doing what seems right. What feels right. Just like when the Elvis impersonator started singing Amazing Grace, I was so nice. Everyone joined in. It was so, it was powerful. It was lovely. Everyone praising God. Mm -hmm. 
it just doesn't get any better than that film. I, I you, you see it, you you got to stick it out. At first, it seems really violent and like it doesn't make sense, but after you, yeah, Paul Walker of uh, of uh, Fast and Furious is in it, and a uh, whole bunch of good actors. I mean, marvelous performances. Best performance of all was by Brendan Fraser playing the uh, the Elvis loser, and he, oh my God, what a talented guy. He's just. I, I just really felt like, gosh, these guys are making a movie about something that, that's really important, you know? And it's couched in a kind of a Tarantino-esque, like, violent thing when it's really about humanity. It's an allegory. And uh, it's a satirical allegory, too, you know, in a sense. But it's all about justice and salvation and payback. And salvation, according to the movie, is um, you got to sell your soul to the devil to sing Amazing Grace and then everything. Then that's what salvation is. The God and the devil is one. So he's describing the DNA situation to a T. To a T. And I know this sounds really blasphemous. I'm not saying to embrace the devil and God. I'm not saying that's possible. If you want to have the devil and God, you can take uh, your screwdriver with a long, long, you know, metal and, and attach one end to the... Uh, of the battery to the to the opposite end of the battery, okay? And you'll see sparks flying. And the, your event, if you leave it that way, your car will blow up. All you got to do is attach those two ends of the wire and your car will blow up. There's no way it can get along, i.e. the world. You attach the two together, you get wars. The reason there are wars is because people have sold their soul to the devil and they made, you know, peace, and they have God on the other, in other words, or God, or being having fidelity to society would be like having God, you know, being good citizens. And you can't put the two together because you can't be a good citizen if you have the devil because the devil's goal is to destroy humanity, obviously. Obviously, that's the goal. So from a bigger perspective, no, it falls apart. Any institution, any church, any, any political organization, any country, any corporation that has that as its policy, will fail and will, you know, implode. Because you can't connect the two ends of the battery. They will not, it won't function. And what Satan vows to do, the devil vows to do, is connect those two things within you harmoniously. And so you have, you know, but really it's, it's, that's a lie too. So, you know, I don't know. Good luck. I, here's what I think that I agree with uh, Solomon in Ecclesiastes. The whole duty of man is to serve God. There really is no other thing. You just have to kind of shut your eyes to all this and trust in the Lord. I just, you know, talk to him every day. I say, Lord, please. Help guide me through this because I can't. But he answered, look, I sought out years ago to answer the question, especially the Zeph report, 2002. And now in 2013, about 11 years later, the question is answered. The question of the evil and the good in the world juxtaposed in all of us. You know, why this, you know, et cetera, and all the suffering um, it's because, you know, technically, just from a physical point of view, you're trying to have light and dark connected together. You're trying to have the same human being, you know, the acceptance of the devil and the acceptance of God in the same person at the same time. And then that one becomes acceptable to society, but society's at war with other societies. And then people are, you know, right? So, so it's already imploding. So you become a part of something, of a sinking ship, so you're on the life raft and you climb onto the sinking ship to be part of, you know, the group. But being on the ship, even while it's sinking, you still have caviar and champagne, oysters on the half shell, the band's still playing, right? People are in tuxedos, people are smoking and drinking and dancing and having sex and whatever. And, uh, all that's going on on the ship versus being on the lonely lifeboat where it's all lonely, but, but the ship is sinking and lifeboat's going to keep going. 
So how many people jump from the lifeboat to the sinking ship? A ship of fools, obviously, is what humanity is. Uh, basically, humanity, that's what humanity does. It Because it, you don't see that. It, you're not shown the sinking ship. The devil's not going to show you that. He's going to say, look at those people eating and drinking and having a great time on board. And look at you out here on this dinghy, just drifting around without any land in sight, all alone. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you uh, give me your soul to get on that ship? Wouldn't you give your eye teeth to get on that ship? If I could get you on that ship, would you, would you bow down? Would you take my offer? If I could get you on that ship, let's say as a, you know, maybe you want to be a, a star of the, of, of the play they're putting on there or the, the singer, or maybe you want to be the captain. If I could get you on there, get you out of this dinghy. I mean, isn't this a horrible place to be, this dinghy, and you, you don't have enough water or food, you're not going to last too long. Wouldn't you want to be on that ship? Let's, let's, let's say that you do have enough food to last and you do intend to hit land, but... Um, most people say, yeah, get me on that ship. You know, you could be somebody in that ship. You could be famous, but I mean, you know, incidentally, it's sinking, but I mean, that's not going to bother you. you it'll, it'll, it'll do you for your, for your time on Earth. Um, so if you get on the ship in order to sing Amazing Grace, the ship is still sinking. That's my point. It's impersonally told. If you want redemption, I suppose, you you just got to stay on that dinghy, I guess, and, and keep talking to the Lord and keep searching for a brighter tomorrow and, and paddle away from the ship where they're laughing and talking and having a time and you just wish you could be there with them, but you do notice the ship is singing, it's breached, and it's sinking. So you paddle off alone, you know? Um, meanwhile, they've forgotten all about you. Yeah. If you showed up on the ship without the devil's provision, they would follow you around, and they would bet on you, and they would, you know, they would film you, and they would spy on you, and they would, they would have a whole thing going on in the background uh, and um, form all kinds of opinions, much like the Truman Show. So the devil is the one that's got to bring you on the ship. Otherwise, it's going to become a fiasco. I've waited. I've thought, you know, if I could have just five minutes here of getting doing something I want to do, of having it go the way I'd like for a change. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've weighed that. I've said, you know, would it be worth it to sell your soul just to have to be able to run around the track and play Lord of the Universe even though the ship is sinking. Maybe it's better to go down with the ship and have that five minutes and go out with a blaze of glory. I mean, there is that debate. There is that debate, Trish. Well, you're a purist. Uh, well, what about that guy that said that I had a vendetta against the church just because I was trying to find the truth? Isn't that a mean, hostile thing to say? Yeah. That was day one, remember? It's like, hello, nice to meet you. Oh, you've got a vendetta or something. I'm like, vendetta? What the hell are you talking about? I'm trying to understand why, why, you know, because it's kind of a uniform thing. Uh... But no, you would say that because you're highly offended by my inquiry. You're highly offended by my times where I preached. You're highly offended by my saying that um, corruption and incorruption cannot be together. You're highly offended that I've basically put out the word of God the way that it was written by the Lord and, and what he has to say to the churches. And you're highly offended by the Lord it's the Lord that you feel has a vendetta. Yet, you say you believe in God. But that the vendetta that the Lord would have is somehow evil. I don't know. I'm depersonalizing it all. I, you know, you, you, you just stay happy in your bubble. 
I, I don't care. I don't have a vendetta. For what, first of all? For, for the things you think about me? Why should I care about what you think about me? For the fact that you would say something rude like that? Why should I care that you say something rude? I don't have to talk to you again. Um, if you know, rude people do not offend me, I just move away from them. Um, I ex fully expect people to be um, as they are in the churches, and, and I fully expect that if, if a, a conscious person like me or, or the many, many others out there went in there, they would be targeted because they would obviously upset the masses who are non-thinking slaves who are asleep. I obviously would upset the apple cart because I'd be a conscious, thinking human being that would want to get to the truth of things and would want scripture to be real and would want a real to do, I would want it to be real, yeah. You get that? Um, I, knowing that, you know, a conscious person would be like oil and water to the church, I don't go, or to the, you know, temple, or to the, you know, synagogue, or to the mosque, or to the uh, whatever it is, or to the um, better yourself organization. I know that I would stir up trouble, so I don't go. I, well, I wouldn't stir up trouble if I nodded my head up and down and just went along with whatever the program was. Then I would be accepted. If I went in questioning, as I do, I've got one last story to tell you, and then we'll, we'll leave it off there because we're, we're over our two-hour mark. I was shakabukud in, uh, uh, in Nichiren Soshu, Shoshu Buddhism in L.A., uh, interestingly enough, by an actress who left the world a long time ago, but her name was Susan Oliver. She was a, I don't know, she'd been on Star Trek. But anyway, she, she was a big-time Buddhist, and I, I, I met her at a writing class. And uh, eventually, I talked to her, and she wanted me to go to a meeting. And she kind of you know, convinced me to give it a try. And uh, I went there, and um, yep, I, as they got so mad at me for asking all these questions that I wouldn't just accept what they were saying. I want to understand the purpose of these chants. I want to understand exactly what, the, what that three chapters of Lotus Sutra was. And eventually she goes, you know, I'm really sorry I ever told you about this. <laughs> now, had I just gone to the meetings every Friday, remember, that, was it Friday? Every Friday there was a meeting, or, or it was Thursday. It was when Miami Vice was on. I remember we were all into Vi Miami Vice. And we had to hurry up and get home after the uh, Gongyo thing because we had to... Uh, shakabuku means, just like it sounds, like shock and awe. It's to shock somebody into the truth, which is Buddhism. The truth, which is Namyoho Renge Kyo. The truth, which is Jesus. I mean, Namyoho Renge Kyo. I mean, Jesus. I mean, I don't know. I mean, money. I mean, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> and it just turned out to be bad and it's been the same thing on every religion I've been to I t Tibetan Vajrayana type of thing there was like initiation thing Siddha Yoga was a disaster um, I went to the Siddha cell which was just two blocks away from me on, in Sherman Oaks and uh, sit around chanting and you know and then there was Darshan and there's like uh, Siva, where you go kiss the feet of the guru and lay down and become a slave and go, you know, paint their house or whatever. And then there is, you know, the the men on one side and the women on the other singing and chanting to the to the um, harmonium and the uh, the drum. And then they bring in Guru Mai, who would sit there and offer her, you know, wisdom and and her blessing to everybody who worships her, literally. And the whole thing made me sick. I mean, it just, I, I, I so I, there was no, you know, so Nietzsche you know, and then, then, uh, then there was this Siddha thing, then there was bouncing over to, you know, then there was the churches. That was a complete, total, 100% worst thing that I ever did was, because I used to hate church and, you know, I met the, the Lord and had my experience and gave my life to the Lord. So I thought, oh, we're supposed to go to church. You know what I mean? Ah, program, go to church. And every one was just another fiasco, just like Buddhism. They're all the same. Whether you're talking about the rapture, 
the Lotus Sutra, you know, uh, Machu Picchu or whatever. It's a, to me, it's all the same thing. It's just man's quest for, you know, man, there's a thing in there that needs the absolute, that needs God. You know, sacred, but what's man looking for? He's looking for God. He's looking for his creator. He's looking for his maker. He's looking for the answer. He needs something. He needs to be nurtured. He needs to be taken care of. He needs to be told it's all right. And the devil will do that and say, look, what's inside of you is all right. It's okay. Let it out. I'll take care of you. I got your back. Look, everyone else is too. It's all one big happy family. Oh, really? Wow, look at that. Everyone's singing Amazing Grace. That's awesome. Hey, and everyone's giving praise to God and Jesus. You're right. I want to get on that ship. How do I get on there? And now I'll see you next time. There you go. I, you know, it's, it, Look, this is as disturbing as the most disturbing. This is like the, watching The Exorcist for the first time for me. I mean, it's, it's, it's scary. The truth is not necessarily comforting. See, at this point of nakedness with the truth, you only re I need the absolute creator. I need the Lord to say, okay, I got you. And I know at the end of the day, there's going to be some beneficent, benign, holy, lovely, amazing reason for, for this whole thing that never happened to have never existed in the first place. With that, I bid you shalom, shalom.